Commissioner, thank you for your testimony. I want to align my comments with those of Senator Bailey. I chair the Committee on Alcoholism and Substance Abuse and co-chair the Senate Task Force on Opioids. And we know from families, from treatment advocates, from recovery advocates, that there are scores and scores and scores of our inmates who are not getting the treatment they need. I know you've made some strides, but, but inmates coming out of incarceration without medication-assisted treatment are among the highest uh, risk for overdose death because they still have the cravings. And when they come out and they use, their body no longer has the tolerance and we end up losing a lot of them. It's also one of the number one reasons for recidivism. So, you know, I implore you to work with us. I know you've done some things, um, but, but whether it's Senator Bailey's bill or we, we do it, you know, in-house through the process, we really need to do more um, because we know there are scores and scores of, of people who are incarcerated who are not getting the treatment that they, that they so desperately need. I totally agree with you in terms of the importance of MAT. Um, we've expanded that. We have a wonderful partnership with Oasis. We have an application in to try and become the first uh, corrections-based certified OTP. That is something that I think could really expand treatment. Right now, we have an initiative where somebody who's already on MAT, namely methadone or buprenorphine, the sentence is two years or less. They can come into our system and be maintained on that and then continue it in the community. But COVID obviously put a, put a huge damper on everything. So I look forward to when COVID's in the rear view, rear view mirror and we can build upon the good work that we've already done and expand upon it, including MAT. All right, I look forward to offline working closely with you on this because I, I think it's an important step that we need to take.